Hi guys, it's Amy Love from Real Food Whole Health. Today we're going to be making kombucha. This is finished kombucha, a delicious cultured probiotic beverage, and I'm going to show you how to make it. So we want to start with a big stock pot and organic sugar, organic black tea, and filtered water. It's an extremely simple thing to make, and it sells for about four to five dollars in the store per 16 ounce bottle. So. Um, I've got about four to five tea bags already out here. I'm going to be making about six quarts um, worth of kombucha. So that's about how many bags I need. I've got a flour sack towel here. This is a clean white um, unbleached towel, a glass bowl. You don't want to use metal or plastic or wood or anything else because the kombucha scoby will detoxify it and those toxins will leach into your kombucha. Here's a rubber band. It's a large style. You can get a home improvement or office supply store. And then this is the kombucha SCOBY. SCOBY stands for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast. And so this is where all of our good um, probiotic bacteria comes from. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put this on the heat. We want to um, basically make sugar water. And uh, well, what we're really doing is making sweet tea. So I'm gonna put in my water. And again, this is clean filtered water. Um, I use a Berkey filter, um, not reverse osmosis or anything like that. Berkey keeps all the minerals in the water and removes chlorine and fluoride and all the amines and the, all that nasty stuff. Um, and then I'm going to put in my sugar. And it calls for one to two cups. So I usually put in somewhere in the middle about one and a half. Uh, so that's a scant one cup and then I'll do about a half. You just have to kind of work with it and see um, what makes the best results for you. And you do want to use cane sugar and not honey um, or anything like that because it will um, potentially kill um, your culture. So I'm going to give this a stir and I'm using a wooden spoon. Uh, you could use a metal spoon here, but you don't ever want your uh, SCOBY to come in contact with metal. Um, but the sugar water and tea, that can all touch uh, metal without a problem. So we've got it coming to a boil here. Um, now I'm going to move it off the heat and um, add my tea now that it's at a good boil. And I've tied my tea bags together so that they're easy to um, get in and out and I you know, don't have to fish through hot water <laughs> to get them, but give them a nice stir. And um, you just want to leave this for about 10 minutes. And we'll see you back when it's done. All right, you can see here that the tea is nice and uh, dark. I'm going to go ahead and get out my tea bags. They've done their job. And you could use a combination of black tea and green tea. I wouldn't really use any herbal teas or anything like that because that can have, again, antibacterial properties. And that kills your SCOBY and your probiotic bacteria. So you can always flavor later with juice. All right, so what I'm going to do here is um, let this cool just a few minutes um, and then pour into um, my glass bowl. You could let it cool in the stove a little bit and then pour it in, but um, it can also cool in the glass bowl. You're going to want it to cool about two hours um, just until it comes to room temperature because, again, we want to keep all that lovely bacteria alive and not kill it. So we're just going to let this rest, and we'll see you back when it is room temperature. Alright, here we are. It's a couple hours later, and I've got a clean hand. I'm just going to test and see. Yep, it's room temperature, so that's perfect. I've got some already brewed kombucha here. You could use original from the store. GT's kombucha is the one that I recommend um, if you're going to start with that, or you could use kombucha from a friend um, if you haven't brewed your own. All right, and now we're going to add in the SCOBY. So again, remember, this SCOBY cannot touch metal. So I have it here in a glass um, bowl covered with a little extra kombucha. We don't want it to dry out. And then I'm going to just lay it on top of the other one. Now you'll see this side is rough, and the other side is sort of smooth. Typically, you want to put the rough side down. If you can't tell a difference, it's okay. It will still make kombucha, um, but that's typically how we want to do it. 
and um, basically this is going to grow a new baby on top of it. We'll talk about that in a minute, but um, you want to go ahead and cover this with a flower sack towel. Um, I use that because it's thinner than a normal towel. It's white. It's unbleached. Um, you know, it doesn't have any dyes or anything. So just use a clean, fresh, freshly laundered towel. Put your rubber band on. And you want to put this in an undisturbed location for 7 to 10 days. It will vary depending on everything from temperature and time of the year to um, moon cycle. It, it all varies, but um, because this is a living thing. So um, basically, you want it undisturbed. And here's one I've already done. And it looks about the same until you get your wooden spoon. Remember, no metal or plastic. And there's two. So this is the baby. And this will allow you to make um, a whole other batch. So you can have two bowls going at once. Or you can give some away to a friend um, so that they can make their own kombucha. You can see here it's it looks different than, <clears throat> than the tea did. So um, it's got all that good bacteria in it. And you could taste it. Um, you know, take a little bit out on a spoon and taste it. Um, to make sure it's the right sweetness or acidity that you want. It just takes a little practice to get it right. But I'll remove these scobies and put this into a jar and save these for my next batch. There you go. Enjoy.